didn't have a burp ready. Uh, uh, yellow vapor fired from Gauss's nipples. <laughs> <laughs> so there's something to edit out. Why do I do this to myself? <sighs> Hello, Jacksonites, and welcome to the third installment of the Gamera Franchise Re-Review. Enough with the fish jokes, John. Today, I will be reviewing the third installment of the Gamera Franchise, and one that many people do like. So me, of course, being myself, I don't particularly care for. And that is 1967's Gamera vs. Gauss. And of course, today, I will be reviewing Gamera vs. Gauss with... KPF at his insistence because he really enjoyed doing Barugan. And it just keeps getting more KPF from here during this series. So Gamera vs. Gauss was when the Gamera series really started to morph into what for a long time many, many, many people viewed the Gamera series as garbage. It was with Gamera vs. Gauss when the budgets for the films got really, really low. And as far as production knowledge about this movie's concerned, the only thing that I know is that from here on out, Noriaki Yuasa will be back in the director's chair for the rest of the Showa series, including up to Gamera Super Monster. But aside from that, don't know a damn thing. So KPF, what is your history with Gamera vs. Gauss? <laughs> I saw Berugan and I said, well, fuck it. Might as well just help Nick get this series out because I did enjoy Berugan a lot more than I thought. So I popped this one in, and I had a lot of fun with it. Well, Gamma vs. Gauss, for me, I don't really have that much to say about it, personal history-wise, because I'd read about the film on Wikipedia, and I noticed uh, that you're not going to top me in the burp department, boy. Anyway, so, of course, and I noticed that Gauss was the only recurring monster throughout the Gamera series, so, of course, that instantly made me think, well, Gauss must be Gamera's King Ghidorah. And even when I was a kid, I wasn't the biggest Gauss fan. But as I grew older, and as I finally watched Gamera vs. Gauss, I wasn't really all that impressed. But as I went through the Gamera series and I became more involved with the Kaiju fan base, I noticed that Gauss does have quite a big fan base. And I've tried to like this movie, but for some reason I just could never do it. So, of course, me being me, with Gauss being considered Gamera's King Ghidorah, of course I don't like Gauss. As I watched the Heisei Gamera series, I was massively disappointed that Gauss was the one that got rebooted and became the big threat for the Heisei Gamera series. <laughs> Especially for Gar Guardian of the Universe, it was supposed to be Barugan originally. But anyway, so as the years went on, as I tried to rewatch Gamma vs. Gauss, I just could not get into this movie for the life of me. So early in the franchise, I'm already going to be pissing up a lot of butthurt fanboys, but I don't really give a shit. I think it's one of the most overrated Gamma movies ever made. Though there are a couple, like I said, there's a couple good things about the film that I will give mention to. Let's get to the plot, shall we? <laughs> The film begins with a series of volcanoes that start erupting throughout Japan, and the eruption of Mount Futago in the Shizuoka prefecture attracts Gamera, who of course is still going around the world looking for sources of heat to feed on. This will really be the last movie where that'll be really addressed in the series, and this will also be the last time where Gamera really walks around on all fours like a real turtle does. The arrival of Gamera at Mount Futago is witnessed by a young boy named, get this, technically he's named Eiichi, so I'll refer to him as Ichi throughout the rest of this video. Gamera climbs up and into the volcano and starts to feed on the flames given off for him to feed. After Gamera climbs into the volcano, a research team is dispatched to find Gamera and study the effects of the eruption. However, while this is going on, an extremely boring plot point is going on, being the Chuo Expressway Corporation is building oh. a roadway nearby. However, local villagers refuse to leave. Take over, KPF. The research team's helicopter is destroyed by a sonic beam, which is a fucking awesome scene, emitted from a cave in the mountains. Reporters are informed that no bodies were found, that the D culprit is not Gamera or the volcanic eruption. An announcement will be made soon. One of the reporters 
Okabe leaves for the site, and he and the road crew foreman Shiro Tsutsumi arrive at a protest area simultaneously. Okabe sneaks through the barrier, and Tsutsumi and his crew are turned away, as are the villager protesters, by the arrival of a young woman. The villagers return to inform the village headmen of all the goings-on around the place. And the protests are actually really a ploy so that they can get more money for their land. I hate this plot point. So the young woman is actually revealed to be Itchy's older sister, Itchier. <laughs> the crew then return to find the work camp destroyed, and they see a strange green glow being emitted from the mountain nearby. And the work crew goes in to investigate. However, Ichi finds Okabe in the woods near Mount Futago, recording the same light that all the workmen saw. And Okabe convinces Ichi that it might be Gamera that destroyed the work camp, and the two make their way to a cave. However, soon after, a cave-in starts, and Okabe runs away, leaving Ichi to be scratched in a cave. Upon exiting the cave, Okabe is eaten... By a giant monster, which of course is the mon the title monster, Gauss. The workmen enter the cave from a different opening, and Itchy makes his way out of the cave by himself, not being scratched, where he discovers Gauss and is trapped by a falling rock. Gauss grabs Itchy with the intention to scratch him, and then Gamera appears. Shiro and his crew arrive just in time to see the first fight between Gamera and Gauss, during the course of which Gauss drops Itchy like a bad habit, who is then rescued by Gamera. Gauss proceeds to injure Gamera with his supersonic beam, looking like he's about to slice Gamera's arm off, but whatever. He is forced to retreat after several blasts from Gamera's fire breath. And then Gamera rescues Itchy, picking up a bad habit, and brings him safely to a nearby amusement park with Itchy riding on his back. This scene. <laughs> Shiro then uses the Ferris wheel to retrieve Itchy from Gamera's back, and Gamera flies away. God damn it, Itchy. Now I can't stop saying Itchy when I say that name. <laughs> Whatever, I'm going to go along with it. Itchy is interviewed about his experiences by Dr. Oiki hey, okay. and the countermeasures group who have set up headquarters in the Hotel Highland. <laughs> It is Ichi who calls the new monster Gaios because of Gauss. the sound it makes. No, it does not make that sound. Actually, um, I figured out that it kind of does. He sounds like he's screeching in a lengthened, distorted version of Gauss. Gauss. Dr. Aoki explains Gaios's abilities. Gauss. And that... <laughs> Gauss's abilities that it was awakened by the volcanic eruptions. So basically, Rodan. Yeah. So I get an aircraft to tag Mount Futago and Gaios. 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 I know, I'm just pissing you off. Destroys him. Ichi calls to Gamera, who is tending his wounds at the bottom of the sea. I don't know. I don't know why being in the water would help him there. Gaios attacks at night and. <laughs> And all the cattle in the village run away. During a meeting the next day, the villagers become divided on whether to sell their land or not because of Gauss. Tatsumi's entire crew save the bulk and skull, motherfuckers. Also quits because of Gauss. <laughs> or else, in the bushes scares the remaining men who think it's Gauss. Instead, each emerges to tell Tatsumi that Gauss only comes out at night. Tatsumi reports this to Dr. Aoki. And the defenders use light to make it too bright at night without success. Miserably. Gauss annihilates the Japanese self-defense force with a blast of wind and flies south to Nagoya. Gauss wrecks havoc in the city, and the people gather at the Junichi Dragons Stadium, where all the lights have been turned on. Then Gamera shows up, and they battle in the skies for their second fight over Nagoya, which is which is a fairly entertaining scene. Gamera soon gains the upper hand because Gauss's sonic ray cannot penetrate Gamera's shell, unlike the next. Shut up, Sean. Unlike the next film's adversary, Gauss then extinguishes Gamera's flame breath with a yellow vapor fired from Gauss's nipples. <laughs> <laughs> and when Gamera hits the water. He proceeds to bite Gauss's foot and tries to hold them there until sunrise. However, oh. Gauss ends up severing his own 
foot off and flies away. His toes are found washed up on the beach by some workers, and they are eventually brought to Dr. Aoki, where it is remarked that it has shrunk considerably since its discovery. Well, it's cold water. Everybody shrinks when they're in cold water. <laughs> Further experiments reveal that ultraviolet light has caused the severed toe to shrink. Therefore, if Gauss is out in the sun for too long, Gauss will die. He's pretty much a wow. kaiju vampire. Meanwhile, Gauss has retreated to its cave and has regrown his toes. Itchy, along with his sister, Itchier, bursts into the planning meeting and inadvertently gives Dr. Aoki the idea he needs. Now get this, this is an actual plan. We'll lure Gauss out at night and immobilize him by making him dizzy by using a rotating platform full of artificial blood on top of the hotel. What? The Defense Force constructs another platform on top of the existing one with a giant bowl of artificial blood on it. With the help of Tatsumi and his crew, they also build a viewing shelter. A delegation of villagers appear and tell Tatsumi they will no longer oppose the expressway. The admin appears and there seems to be some disagreement between the two sides. Gaius is lured out, but the plane ultimately falls when the substation powering the motors explodes. Gaius then destroys the hotel, extinguishing the substation fire with its vapor. Nipples. Away. Yeah. And because of Gauss and the expressway being rerouted, and the villagers who were told by the headmen to hold out can no longer sell their land, the villagers blame the elder... And uh, Itchy comes out of his house, throwing a flea tantrum and berates the villagers for their greed. His sister, Itchier, also tells the villagers that the headman was acting in their best interests, and the villagers then proceed to leave. Back inside the house, Itchy and Itchier talk to amongst themselves about Gamera would be the one to finish Gauss, and that starting a forest fire at Mount Futago would attract Gamera to come fight Gauss, which... Actually, is one thing that this movie does better than its predecessor is that it realizes, hey, we have another giant monster that could potentially kill this thing. The headman goes to Tatsumi and explains the plan. Tatsumi tells the headman that there will be a lot of money lost because of the destroyed trees, but, you know, you can't regrow trees. However, the headman believes that Gauss was sent as punishment for their greed. Oh my god, oh my god, I hated that. Tatsumi and his crew use their construction equipment to prepare the area for the fire, and an airstrike napalms the shit out of the place. Gauss appears to put out the fire with his vapor nipples, and the second time the fire is started, it does succeed in attracting Gamera. The third and final fight ensues, which ends with Gamera taking Gauss from behind, immobilizing him, and flying him to Mount Fuji, where he is trapped. <laughs> Where he then drags Gauss into the crater to die, and Gamera flies away, thus ending the film. So how about this plot? Well, does it live up to Gamma vs. Berrigan? Not at all. I think this movie is a vast uh, decline from, the, from its predecessor. Even though Gamera is a lot more involved with this film... I really do think that this movie is a massive letdown from Gamma vs. Berrigan. That's really all, I, all my thoughts on it initially. What are your initial thoughts for this film? In general, I think what Berrigan did wrong, it did ten times worse, in my opinion. Bit of a mixed bag for me. Yeah. Let's get to the pros of Gamma vs. Gauss. So, Gamma's suit in the film, it looks better. If I'm remembering right, in Barugan, his arms looked a little weirder. Like, they looked like they just were, like, a last-minute, like, addition to the suit. Like, someone just, like, sewed on the two little arms. For whatever reason, the suit looked a little better in this. I think guy, I think the scenes where Gaios could use this as being, like, split things in half was really cool. I love that. <laughs> the reveal, excuse me, of Gaios when he's down in that little, like, valley and fucking itchy is, like, looking at you just, like, see the top of his head. I thought that was pretty cool. I like his design, Guy Gaius' design. It looks pretty cool. Um, I like that they added like the whole um, more bat-like features, like the folded, the wings kind of fold up. I kind of like that, and I like the head. It, it looks a lot like the Hawk Muto from Godzilla 2014 in terms of just what. 
just always goes back to 2014 for you, doesn't it? It does. It looks it looks just like it. The fight scenes in this movie way better in terms of the monster fights way better than they were in Barugan. I think they were underwhelming in Barugan. They continue to do the effects with the suits they do with Barugan where they have like certain parts light up. I thought that was pretty cool. That's about it. So my pros for Gamma versus Gauss, like I said, I have four. Pro number one, the music score for this movie is decent. One second. As I was saying, the music score for Gamma versus Gauss is decent. Not as good as Gamma versus Barrigan, but still, for this movie, it is fitting. Gauss certainly has a good theme in this film. And the opening theme, when Gamma is walking throughout the volcano, that's a good theme, too. And overall, throughout the film, the music score, it does complement the movie. Though, like I said, it's not as good as Gamma versus Barrigan. Pro number two, like I mentioned a minute ago, is that this movie has a good buildup. For Gauss. Like the first scene where Itchy and his dude are going throughout the cave and we see the shitty bats. Oh my god, oh those my bats. God. They're back. They look even worse than they did in Gamma vs. Barrogan, if that's god. even possible. <sighs> the film has really good buildup for the first appearance of Gauss. Like they kind of pull an original alien. And overall, this movie does have good buildup for Gauss. I will give this movie that. Pro number three is that the monster fights in this film are a big improvement over the previous film. I will give this movie that. As much as I do like Gamma vs. Barrigan, yeah, the monster fights in that movie, especially the first one, wasn't that good. And thankfully, the monster fights in this movie are a lot more entertaining. They're a lot more dynamic. They're a lot more, there's a lot more action going on in it. I do think the weakest fight is the first one, I, I will admit. Kind of consists of Gamera getting his ass kicked for most of the fight. The second one is a lot better. The first half of it is just a big air battle, which is really entertaining because these are two flying monsters. So that was cool. And the third fight, probably the best scene in the film, especially when Gamera takes Gauss from behind. <laughs> <laughs> two monsters in a row bleed grape kool-aid and pro number four is that the special effects for this movie they're not good like the previous movie was but they're decent they're they're above average i will say the gamma suit looks good they redesigned his face to make him look a lot more doughy and look like a just He's like a big, powerful version of Barney in this movie. He really becomes that in the next movie, but... Gamera will have this design up until Gwiron. I do like Gamera's design for this movie. It's probably his most classic Showa design. The pseudimation looks alright. The sets look good. The city sets also look pretty well constructed. When buildings and vehicles are destroyed by Gauss's supersonic ray, the way they perfectly are sliced in half looks pretty cool. Though there's one scene where the helicopter at the beginning is sliced in half and it slowly comes apart and people start falling out. It's a little ridiculous because that's not what would happen in real life because, you know, Dai oh, still cannot do planes. Oh, and there's another scene where there's a car that is sliced in half by Gauss's beam. And there's, what was it, like two or three dudes in the movie or in, in the car? There's three dudes. Okay. One half of the car stays in place, but the other half, it's like the shell of the car. The engine doesn't get destroyed. It, it shoots off. And then the third dude, it's like, whoa, what the fuck? He jumps off the one half, and he jumps onto the other half, and they just start driving away again. That scene's funny. The wire works are a mixed bag. There's a lot of moments where you can see the wires. But the wire work for overall is kind of okay. And overall, this the special effects, they're... They're above average. They're not terrible, but they're not amazing either. One more pro is that the Gamera has a lot more screen time in this movie. This movie is 92 minutes long, I believe. I think it's 88 minutes long. I'd be willing to say that Gamera has about 18 minutes of screen time. So that is an improvement I can say this movie does over Gamera versus Barrigan. So let's get to the cons. <laughs> Is Ichi, or I guess in a way you could say is the is Ichiro before Ichiro was the thing from Godzilla's Revenge. They're both wearing the same hat. They could have just been the style at the time, but basically, mini Ichiro. 
a lot less annoying. Still pretty bad. Gamera once again acts like a dumbass. He like he gets his like arm like hit by Gaius. He's like, ah, it doesn't even do anything. The plan to kill Gaius is one of the weirdest whack ass plans I've ever seen. It is so fucking weird. The big problem with this movie, it's just like the last one. You have a monster who has some weird glow effect on his suit who has some weird-ass weakness. Gamera shows up, gets his ass kicked instantly. The military tries to find a way to beat the monster. Gamera comes in the end and kills the monster. Only this time, there was less actual good stuff as a side plot, like the jewel and the island, and this time it was like a fucking railway. The same formula, and it got kind of annoying. So my cons for the movie. Con number one is Gauss himself. I cannot stand Gauss for the life of me. I don't like it. I don't like his design. I don't like his roar. I don't like his power set. The only one that I kind of like is the is the the nipple thing. I don't like the fact that he is considered to be Gamera's ultimate foe. Where I where I really wish it was Barugan, but no, it's got to be fucking Gauss. Con number two is that the green screen effects in this movie are just fucking horrendous. And they just keep getting worse and worse and worse as the series goes on. But the green screen effects in this movie, they're thankfully the best of the worst throughout the series. But yeah, the green screen effects for this movie, they're pretty terrible. Con number three is that this movie is poorly paced. The first act is decently paced because it starts off with a bang, but then it kind of slows down and it has that good buildup for Gauss. The third act, when, they tr- when they're when they trying to kill Gauss with the bullshit rotating bullshit thing, uh, that's when, that's when, even though it's stupid, that's when the movie does pick up and become entertaining, but it's that damn second act that is really difficult to sit through. The only break in the second act that's entertaining is Gamera's second fight with Gauss, but outside of that, the second act is a chore to sit through, because that's when the road plot really starts to pick up. The road plot in this movie is just boring. Boring, boring, boring as fuck. I don't give a flying fuck about these villagers wanting to screw over a big corporation to get more money so that they can be greedy assholes. The, uh, the, the men man, man are greedy stupid fucking thing came back too. I forget the character's name. Who was whoever was a main character? Kaisuke, whatever the fuck. Kaisuke. Yeah, he he was like, he was like, what have mankind come to? And I'm like, it's like the same. They said. By the way, that same actor plays Tatsumi in this movie too. Yes. And that leads me to a con that I have just added is the reused greed plot point. It just feels like, yeah, that's exactly what it feels like. It feels like it's being reused from Gamma versus Barrigan, and it just comes off as them being lazy. It was kind of an overarching theme throughout Gamma versus Barrigan, even though it got a little preachy towards the end. Here, it's just shoved in at the last minute, and it really, really shows. The entire human cast for this movie sucks. They're very bland. They're very boring. They're, they have no personality. Their dialogue is... It ranges from basic to boring. One of the most unnoteworthy human casts in a kaiju movie that I've ever seen in my life. Thankfully, the nicest thing I can say about Ichi is that of all the kid characters throughout Gamera movies, he's probably the least annoying. Because wait until you get to the next movie, KPF. Because they have two instead of just one. Oh, fuck. And it remains two for the rest of the Showa series oh. up up until Gamera Super Monster. But yeah, God. Itchy thankfully is the least most annoying kid of the entire Showa Gamera series, but he still is annoying. Especially in the English dub. Oh my god, the English dub for this movie is terrible. Itchy, he he has his moments where he's tolerable to, to listen to, but overall he still is pretty annoying. <laughs> All that said, what are your final thoughts on Gamma versus Gauss? I can say I liked it. I think, like I said earlier, my major issue with Barugon was the monster action. This definitely fixed that. And I do like Gauss a little better than Barugon. The monster action's a lot better. 
the human characters took a fucking nosedive. And it's hard to say, though, because the monster action is so much better, but the human shit is so much worse. But in the end of the day, it's a lot easier to do good monster action than human stuff. So I True. do I do think that, that Barugon was bound better in that category. But overall, I'm not going to get my score yet. I think it was slightly worse than Barugon. I'm just not the biggest fan of this movie. And and like I, I keep saying, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse from here on out. I don't like Gauss. The human characters suck. The road plot is boring. What's your rating for this film, KPF? So I gave Baruch, I'm going to say this, I gave Baruch on the 7 out of 10 the other day. When I reflect on it, I want to bump that to a 7.5. If you see that old review, it's a 7.5 now, but I give this film a 6 out of 10. I give Gamera versus Gauss a 5.5 yeah. out of 10. If you had to make me sit down and watch one Gamera movie, I could tough myself through it. But there's far better Gamera movies out there that I would rather watch. So with that being said, thank you very much for listening to me and KPF talk about this film. And from here on out, guys, we're going to have some rough goes. Post your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe to KPF's channel. He's got some re-edits of my video on the way out. And Sean, shut it with the fucking annoying me being 10 out of 10 bullshit. Please at least look forward to the next video as KPF and I rip and tear into one of the worst Gamera movies of the entire series. 1968's Gamera vs. Virus. Go out and get involved with an annoying kid who's just like a bad itch and never goes away. As we watch a giant turtle take a, a giant bat from behind and take him into burn. And I will see you guys in the next video. No, I am not reviewing the 18 movie long witchcraft series. Fuck you. And no, I do not think Mothra 92 is better than this movie, Sean. Shut up. I would recommend Gamera Super Monster. Maybe it's because that movie is such a piece of shit, or if it's because I had this jackass with me reviewing it. <laughs>